Welcome back. Uh, as you'll see, once again, we don't have our ruler saved. So just as a reminder, if you're seeing that asterisk up there, control S, go ahead and save that so that you don't lose your work. Okay, control S will help you to save. Let's go ahead and put our markings down along the bottom side of this ruler, uh, my inch markings. So you're going to notice I've got some inch markings and fraction markings. I'm going to show you how to do the inch markings. Uh, the fractional markings are the same, and you can figure those out. Uh, big problem here is that we are actually upside down. Oof. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you. So just like we started our sketches for our, for our top... Uh, numbers and I can go back in and I can edit the sketch. I can fiddle around with it if I don't like where the spacing is of things. I can just come back into my sketch and double click on my letters uh, and it will appear. Uh, but just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and take a space out of this too. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this sketch over just a little bit to 0.3. That looks a little better. So I'm going to start a new sketch on the surface again, but I'm going to start over on this back side and I'm going to start doing my letters and I'm going to do my one inch, two, three, I'm going to do my six inch marks, okay? So let's choose our letters, our text, and this time, a little bit different, we're going to go ahead and flip these upside down. So I do want to start out with a line that goes across here and I'm going to choose the center line. <coughs> that essentially stretches from one end to the other. And I'm going to use that center line to put my letters on. So now you see how it says curve. I'm going to grab that curve, line one. And my letters are going to appear on that. And what that lets me do is to flip them, reverse them, and flip them upside down. So let's look at some of these. If I go one, two, three. you can see that they are upside down because I have flipped them upside down on that line. I drew that line left to right. That's kind of what I want to do, isn't it? So by drawing that line left to right, I can make these letters appear upside down. And that's how I want to put them. And I haven't given any dimensions to this line yet, and that's on purpose. Because when we edit that line, we can move those numbers. So let's make our font a little bit bigger. I'm going to choose, instead of using document font, I want to use a bigger font, again, an Arial. Uh, it's a pretty easy font to work with. And let's make this font a quarter inch tall, and let's make it, uh, I don't know, sorry, an eighth inch tall. Let's make it three divided by 16 tall and uh, that's 0.1875 tall and then in between each one let's leave that same spacing that's fine for me we'll make it work okay see our numbers are a little bit bigger uh, and let's go through now and start spacing these out now the first thing I need to do is I need to get this first number so that it appears at the right spot so I'm going to exit out of my sketch here, exit out of the text version of my sketch, and I'm going to move this, and I want these numbers to start at that one inch mark. So the way I can do that is I can give a dimension to this point, and I'm going to make it one inch. That's where my first number is going to appear, <clears throat> one inch. And they're not too bad, actually, uh, the spacing of them. But once I'm done with my dimension tool, I can double click my numbers, and you see how that A appears? Double click there and I'm editing my text. So now you can see that I need a little bit more space between the one and the two. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So I need to keep spacing out. So I've got about, eh, about 10. So there's my two. And I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For my three. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for my 4. A little more for my 4. Get it just to the other side. 
my five. That's better positioned. And then my six. Now my six is going to be off of the uh, off of the digit, so I'm going to actually move this over here from one inch. I'm going to go over to about 0.8 inches. I'm going to put the numbers on the other side. We'll make it 0.85. There we go. Now we'll zoom in. We'll see how that appears. Not too bad. A little too much, a little too close on my number two. So I'm going to edit that. I'll take a space out of my number two. Add it into my three. My four looks good. My five looks good. And you'll see that my six isn't appearing. And the reason it isn't appearing is it's past the line point. So I'm going to drag this line point out. There's my six appears now. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'm going to add one more space here between my five and my six. Nope, I won't. So there I have it. So there's my text and it's upside down. So to get that text upside down, what I had to do is I had to put a reference line for it to go off of. And I'm going to go ahead and fully dimension that line and make it stable now. Uh, and sorry, I grabbed actually instead of a edge, I grabbed a point. So now we'll make this, uh, let's call this point three, five inches. Point four inches. There, that looks better. And now I have my text arranged. So I've got these two text rows and uh, they're kind of neat. Uh, they're just not very very good looking because you can see all the, the lines and the dots in it. So let's now do what's called a wrap. Uh, and again, I don't worry if I'm not fully defined on a text layout. And that happens. Uh, the way I could make this fully defined if I wanted to is I could actually give this line a length right here. It doesn't make a lot of difference. Or what I could do actually is just attach it to the other end here. It doesn't make a lot of difference. And now it's fully def uh, it's still underdefined, but that's it's hard to fully define your text. So we're not going to worry too much about text that's underdefined. But what I'm now going to do is go to my features tab and grab this wrap. So wrap basically puts contours onto a face. So I'm going to choose the wrap button and then it says hey select the sketch or the face. So I'm going to choose this first sketch. <clears throat> now I can't do more than one sketch at a time so I've got to do multiple wraps. And you can see that I can lay the wrap on here either a spline surface or basically analytical lay it on. I can make it stick out, cut in, or just scribe it. And I'm going to choose scribe it. What the heck? Because that's what we're going to do with our laser. So I choose Scribe and hit Apply. Well, actually, I also have to tell the face it's going to go on. So right here, my second button, I need to choose a face. It's going to go on this face. Once I've done that, apply it. And what you'll see is all the construction geometry is consumed by making the wrap. It takes a little while to do this. It's, it's a fairly processor-intensive activity. So it takes a moment, and I'll pause until it comes back. All right, we're back. There's our wrap, uh, and you'll notice that it, it looks very neat now, and this is scribed on, as are our lines. These lines are actually cut in. Uh, but our, our text is really neat, so let's do a second wrap of the second set of text. Again, hit the wrap button, select sketch nine for me, select the surface I'm gonna use, and we're gonna go ahead and scribe it in. Got my face, accept it, and pause. So right now it's wrapping it, and we'll pause the video until it comes back. All right, there's our fully laid out ruler. Pretty neat. You'll see you've got these nice tick marks. We'll put some fractions on. Uh, you can put fractions on down here at the bottom the way that I've shown you on the instructions. All that is is a matter of laying out your eighths marks, one eighth, three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths, and your quarter inch marks. 
just like that, just like it shows in your instruction handout. You'll do wraps for those individual lines as well. And that's it. Save your part, submit your part. Thanks for watching.